like I'm a huge like advocate that you don't have to go to school to learn how to paint or draw or you don't have to go to school to be an artist. So for being a makeup artist, what is your thoughts on that? I think you need to go to the school of dedication, which is meaning by any means, I'm going to learn this skill, whether it's in a classroom or whether it's um, through creating these experiences or the or creating these opportunities or finding the opportunities mm -hmm. to learn it. So I, I would say both. I would say if you feel like your personality needs a structured environment to learn something, I need to see something A, B, and C. I need to be on a deadline. I need to be on a timeline. You know, I need to take tests to make me feel like I'm actually advancing. You know, you know your personality. Then go mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. My personality, I absolutely do not think you have to go to school <laughs> um, based on my personality. I, I feel like you can be self-taught. I feel like the access to information now is greater than it's ever been at any point in time. I mean, you can go on YouTube and probably learn brain surgery. Like, <laughs> there's so right. many different avenues and resources everything. and, you know, DMing mm -hmm. people and networking to find people who can teach you these skills or just learn from what they're already putting out there. Yeah. So I agree with that. Like if you're if you go to a school of dedication by any means necessary, mm -hmm. you will figure out how to learn mm -hmm. what you're passionate in. Yeah, that's that's a good I never heard anybody could write that. So the school of dedication. <laughs> no, that is that's that's that makes perfect sense. So, yeah, so. school of dedication at the only school you need to go to. <laughs> and then that includes which he was saying, yeah, that that's, your class. Class. that's the way you, you do it. A lot of people too feel like when somebody goes to school or they have their cosmetology license or they have their esthetician license, like I don't really know the names. No, you're right. you're right. But like people feel like when you have those things, it gives you like a higher level of like your skills. But what would you say you need to be a professional makeup artist? So I think with with schooling, you know, if I'm getting brain surgery, yeah, I hope you went to school for brain mm -hmm. surgery because you're not operating on my brain. Mm -hmm. But being a makeup artist is not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Anybody can learn it. Going back to that school of dedication, like if you feel like um, school is right for you, if you want to be an esthetician, if you want your license, if that gives you that extra oomph to make you feel like you have arrived, mm -hmm. then do that for yourself. And if you feel like, you know, I need that process oriented structure to learn this skill and do that for yourself. But to hold that over someone or mm -hmm. to say, you know, I'm a more legit or a more recognized artist because I actually went to school for this. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're just lying to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many great artists that I've seen. Most of the ones that I like and follow and admire, they started doing this you know, on their free time. Mm -hmm. And they taught themselves and they went to that school of dedication and they figured it out without a degree, without spending thousands of dollars. So everybody's path is different. If you're dedicated, you're gonna figure out what's best suited for you. So you mentioned that you are a wife, a mother, mm -hmm. you're full time professional art makeup artist. How do you like juggle all of that? I'm sure I'm not even mentioning mm -hmm. everything that you do, so how do you juggle your schedule? Google Calendar, first of all. Like, mm -hmm. The way I literally do mm -hmm. it is Google Calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it's not happening. Just like you sent me an invite for this today. If mm -hmm. this was not on the calendar, I was not gonna be here. Mm -hmm. Like my Google Calendar is like the thing that I live by mm -hmm. and I'm very big on that. You can ask all my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm the invite queen. I send mm -hmm. you an invite when you're just going to shop to get, like I don't play, it's, it has to be on the calendar. So I think that helps me manage, you know, what I have to do and it tells me in the long run what's coming up for me to prepare. But as far as having the tools and the capacity to do all those things, there's no right answer. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's a juggle, it's a constant struggle, it's a constant balancing act. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out, you know, how to balance it all and how to have it all. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, one of the things I ask myself is, do I have food? Do I have shelter? How is my spirituality? That's all you really need, mm -hmm. right? Like, and obviously, does your family help you? Does your family <laughs> yeah, have shelter? Yeah. How is your family's spirituality? Mm -hmm. But 
those are the things you need. Mm -hmm. Everything else is excess. Mm -hmm. Everything else is our wants and our desires and the things that we think we need to have. So there's nothing wrong with aspiring to be better or to be to be great, but at the same time, um, when it comes to juggling these things, you really just have to prioritize. Um, and then also recognize that things would just not get done. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna clean this room? Or am I gonna edit my YouTube video? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta pick one. One thing I told myself the other day was, cause I feel like my house never stays clean cause I have a five year old and a two year old. I said, your house can always be clean. Mm -hmm. You can always get your house cleaned, uh, whether you hire someone or whether you do it yourself. Can you always edit this video? Mm -hmm. Can you always take this client? No. So if you gotta clean that room that the client is coming in and then every other room mm -hmm. is messy, mm -hmm. that's what you gotta do that day. Mm -hmm. um, but also stick into your schedule. Like I'm not a very, creators are not very routine oriented. Mm -hmm. Are you? Cause I'm not. I'm it's not. Like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. But, but with you, like I've seen on your stories that you're up like five, four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and it's just like, how do you do it all? Waking up so early, having a husband, having two no. kids, no. Uh, like under five. Listen, remember, still looking beautiful. Remember, this is for the viewers. What people put on social media is what they want you to see and what they want you to know. They're gonna show you their best day the best minute, the best moment, they're not gonna show you what's really happening. Mm -hmm. So when you said that, if I was up at 5 a.m., first of all, that was probably for a job. Mm -hmm. Usually makeup jobs for weddings, I'm up that early, but I am not a morning riser. <laughs> I do it because I have to, but I'm not an early riser. But I do believe in routine as far as, one of the things I'm trying to implement as of recently is just going to bed just 30 minutes earlier. Not a whole hour, 30 minutes it was earlier. early for you? Early for me is like 10.30. So going to bed at 11 and anything after that, I'm gonna be tired in the morning. I'm not getting up on time. So going to bed 30 minutes earlier, at least if you're just in the bed, maybe mm -hmm. you're not like actively sleeping yet, but you're in the bed, you know, you're creating this process to routinely do it. Mm -hmm. Then your body's like, oh, your body reacts to it. Like, oh, she's going to bed right now. Great, now I'm gonna get the rest that I need to mm -hmm. perform tomorrow. I also believe in working out. I'm very into that, <laughs> as yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, I feel like when I don't work out, my energy is low. Um, the capacity, the mental capacity that I have to perform and to get things done diminishes mm -hmm. when I'm not consistent with it. So I know working out, um, sleeping, and of course diet. Mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest health eater, mm -hmm. but I try to follow 80-20. Well, if I'm gonna eat bad, I'm gonna to try to do it 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if I'm gonna be good, at least 80%. Mm -hmm. So that I could feel vital and I could feel like I have um, the proper energy to perform tasks. I, I'm very big on how I feel, pay attention to that. So when I when I know that's off, I already know that it could jeopardize mm -hmm. my productivity. I, I saw too that you do drink a lot of water and that you have like a water. Oh. Like what is so I am a brand ambassador for Path Water. That's Use true. my code Akila10 for 10% off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, water has always been so important to me. <laughs> I hope it's important to everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like one of those people who try different waters, compare which one mm -hmm. tastes better, which one has a higher pH balance. Is the bottle really saying what it does? Um, I'm really into that and so what attracted you to, to that particular water pathway? Oh, I just really like what they stood for. Um, their bottles are reusable. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, reuse this bottle. Like, yeah, buy new bottles mm -hmm. eventually, but reuse this bottle. Refill this water with the water you already have in your house, you know, mm -hmm. whenever you're out and about, use it as an actual water bottle so that the life cycle mm -hmm. of it is not ending up in the landfill. So that really inspired me. And then the charity work that they do, you know, what they do with their proceeds, as well as the taste. Mm -hmm. The taste of it is literally the best water I've tasted. Every fresh bottle is, is the best water. It's definitely in the top three. I won't talk about the other two. <laughs> okay, I'm about to try some of that half water.